ladies and gentlemen, my mother, my hero, and our next president, Hillary Clinton. Uh, Pope Francis is definitely preaching the message the false prophet will preach when he comes. For example, he is adamantly against free enterprise. He calls it the liquid economy. He doesn't call it free enterprise because he knows so many people really believe in free enterprise. So he doesn't call it that. He changes the term, but he means the same thing. He calls it the liquid economy because liquid seeks its own level. That's the way free enterprise works. He says what we need now is a social economy, which is socialism. He is an avid advocate of socialism. He also is a tremendous promoter of globalization. Globalization is the method has been adopted to bring about one world government. That's what the word means. To globalize the world is to get rid of the nation state and to replace it with a system of global governance. Strobe Talbot said it best in 1992 when writing for Time magazine. He said, in the 21st century, national sovereignty as we have known it will cease to exist. We'll all answer to a single global authority. One year later, Bill Clinton brought him to his White House to act as Deputy Secretary of State for the next seven years. Today, Strobe Talbot presides over the number one influential liberal think tank in America, the Brookings Institute. And he had a lady come work for him two years after he took that job, after the Clinton administration was over. Susan Rice came to work for him. When Barack Obama was running for president, he called Strobe Talbot and said, Strobe, I need someone to advise me on foreign affairs. He said, I've got just the person for you, Susan Rice. Susan Rice became Barack Obama's foreign affairs advisor. They won the election, and he then appointed her to be our ambassador to the United Nations so she could go there and preach because she believed what Strobe Talbot believed, that in the 21st century, national sovereignty will cease to exist. We'll all answer to a single global authority or to a one world government. Well, Susan Rice now is Barack Obama's number one foreign policy advisor. She's his uh, uh, international advisor on foreign affairs. Someone else now has the ambassadorship to the United Nations, but she is his national security advisor right now. So the Obama administration and the Clintons and the Bushes 
all believe in one world government. And that's the reason that the United States is in such a political warfare right now. Because Trump says we've got to build our borders and start enforcing our borders or we don't have a country. Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama say, come one, come all. Globalization. There is no such thing as a country. We all believe in one world government. So this election is possibly the most important election America will ever experience. The root, the central issue of this election is will we move into one world government through globalization or will we retain our sovereignty? Will we renounce our declaration of independence and adopt a declaration of interdependence? What will we do? And that's the issue of this present, present election that we're in right now. 지금 미국은 2016년도 11월에 대통령 선거를 앞두고 있습니다. 아, 오바마 대통령이 당선된 이후 어, 지금까지 미국은 어, 이란과 핵 협상을 타결하고 또 동시에 이스라엘과는 점점 거리가 멀어지는 정책을 펴왔고요. 뭐 많은 사람들이 알다시피 또 그동안 미국은 동성애를 합법화한다든가 어, 또 어떤 그주 법원에 앞마당에 있었던 10개 명을 철거한다든가 이렇게 반기독교적인 그런 정책을 많이 펼쳐오면서 많은 크리스천들의 좀 걱정을 사는 그런 시간들이었는데 어, 힐러리 클린턴 역시 어, 오바마 정권과 똑같은 그런 정책을 펼쳐나가지 않을까 이런 생각을 하고 있는데 그런 측면에서 봤을 때 우리 크리스천들 입장에서는 좀 많은 걱정이 있습니다. 또 상대 후보인 도널드 트럼프 같은 경우는 일단 정치 경험도 없고 어, 또이 말을 막 하면서 구설수에 오르기도 하고 특히 한국에 대해서는 굉장히 네가티브한 부정적인 그런 견해를 밝혀서 한국 사람들한테는 어, 인기가 안 좋은 그런 상황입니다. 신실한 기독교인의 입장에서 과연 미국의 새로운 대통령 어떤 인물이 되기를 기도하는 것이 좋겠습니까? Well, I think there's no doubt that Hillary Clinton and President Obama are determined to lead us into the new world order. They're moving us toward one world government. Hillary said it's not time to build walls. It's time to build bridges. Obama has opened up the borders. He is violating federal law right now. We have laws against people coming in illegally. He's ignoring those laws and letting anybody come in that wants to come in. That has become the leading issue of this present presidential campaign. Trump is saying, we've got to enforce our borders. We are against globalism. The world is moving into catastrophe right now. During the Obama administration, the national debt has doubled in seven short years. We've gone from like nine trillion in debt to 18 trillion in debt. The weight has become of the national debt is becoming incredible. Trump says that all has to be reversed. Obama is setting us up to force us into a one world economic system and a one world governmental system. Now, Donald Trump, it is true, does not have political experience. And we're very happy about that. We're tired of what has happened with all the people with political experience because on both sides, whether it's Republican or Democrat, the establishment have been working together. We've been voting for Tweedly D or Tweedly Dumb for 50 years now. Most people don't know this, but there's a private club here in America called the Council on Foreign Relations. 50% of all cabinet members come from the Council on Foreign Relations, and it doesn't matter who we elect, whether it's Republicans in power or Democrats in power, for the last 50 years, 50% 50 of all of our cabinet members have come from this little private club. And we wonder why we keep getting the same result. Well, Trump is a threat to that elite system that has taken away democracy from us. He is here to say, I'm going to restore true Americanism. A clue to what's going to happen is this. In Revelation 13, when you have this combo beast, body of the leopard, feet of the bear, mouth of the lion, ten horns of the ten horn kingdom, guess what's not there from Daniel 7? One thing, 
the eagle's wings. So when we see all the powers of Daniel 7 transition over to the one world government in the end time, no eagle. So what does that mean then? Does that mean America is going to come out and not be a part of the system of the Antichrist? We have another clue. In Revelation 12, when the Antichrist makes war against Israel in verse 14, the Bible says there will be given to the woman with the 12 stars about her head. That's a, a symbol for Israel, the 12 stars of the 12 tribes. The Bible says that when the Antichrist comes down to make war against her during the Great Tribulation, there was given to her two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into her place where she's protected for time, times, and a half a time, for three and a half years, all during the Great Tribulation. That depicts the eagle's wings, the United States, defending Israel against the Antichrist. Well, that's wonderful news. That speaks to me that we're going to be opposing the Antichrist and protecting Israel all during the Great Tribulation. So that's where I think we're headed right now. And if that is to happen, America's got to have a tremendous change of direction. It looks like to me that this election may bring that change about. Everybody's stunned that Trump has done so well, but it almost looks like an act of God. 목사님이 보시기에는 힐러리 클린턴과 도널드 트럼프 두 후보가 바라보는 이스라엘에 대한 시각, 애정 어떻다고 보십니까? Um, when we're dealing with the stance of Hillary Clinton on Israel and Donald Trump's stance on Israel, neither one of them understand the prophecies of the Bible. If they did, it would determine their policy. However, Hillary Clinton has adopted the global agenda totally. She is sold out to the globalists who believe in one world government. She has said very clearly, it's not time to build walls, it's time to build bridges. It's time to open borders. So she's an avid advocate of globalization. Donald Trump does not want America to be melted into a one world government. He wants the opposite. Now I wish Donald Trump understood the prophecies better than he does, because it would help him be even more solid in the stances, but it looks like he is taking the right stances right now. Um, so consequently, am I willing to say that Donald Trump is the ultimate Christian? No, I don't even know that he's a Christian at all. If he is, he needs to clean up his language. But um, at the same time, as far as the, his position toward Israel, his position toward Israel is closer to the Bible than Hillary's position on Israel. Yes, there is. Donald Trump's daughter married a Jewish man and converted to Judaism. He has three Jewish grandchildren. Uh, furthermore, when he made his speech at IPAC, it was a ringing endorsement of Israel. He has two of his closest foreign policy advisors are from Israel. Donald Trump has said recently he will not force a two-state solution. Hillary Clinton is an avid advocate of the two-state solution. Now there's going to be a two-state solution and Donald Trump says if that's the best way to solve the Israeli-Palestinian problem then I would be glad to help facilitate that. However, I will never force a two-state solution. That's Israel's decision to make, not the decision of the U.S. For the last eight years, President Obama has attempted to strong-arm Israel, and Netanyahu has had to fight with all of his might to stop the pressure from the United States. However, there is going to be a peace agreement. Now, there should not be, because Israel should never give away its promised land. But because Israel's leaders are not faith-filled, and because they, are trying, they fear the United Nations and the United States more than they fear God, they are getting ready very quickly now to sign a peace agreement with the Palestinians. And when they do, that will mark the beginning of the final seven years to the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, some of them want to get it done yet this year. If they get it done, it's going to form a Palestinian state in what's known as the West Bank, biblically known as Judea Samaria. It is going to 
allow the Jews who live out there to stay out there as a Jewish minority under the Palestinian state. It's going to put the Temple Mount under a sharing arrangement. But Israel's going to keep control of Jerusalem. The Palestinians are going to say, we'll never agree to that. But when they negotiate this deal, they'll say, look, we can't solve Jerusalem right now. Let's get the rest solved. Let's put off the Jerusalem issue for seven years. The Bible says the Antichrist will confirm Israel's right to exist for seven years. At the end of the seven years, they're going to bring the issue back. And the United Nations is going to pressure Israel to give up half of Jerusalem for a Palestinian capital. They're not going to agree. That's going to result in the invasion of Israel by the United Nations. Zechariah 14.2 says, I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. That will be the battle of Armageddon. That's where we're headed. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, are they the same as the faith of the faith? No, they're not. They put forth the aura of religiosity. Uh, President Obama says he's a Christian. However, when he made his speech in Cairo, Egypt in 2009, he said the call of the imam to prayer in the evening is the most beautiful sound on the earth. And when he said that, I said, wait, I'm a Christian. I would never say that the call to come and pray to Allah is the most beautiful sound on earth. But of course, President Obama says, look, Allah, Jehovah, Jesus, all the same thing. We all worship the same God. We just call him different names. But that's not true because the, the Muslims do not believe Jesus is God. Christians, we adamantly believe Jesus is God. So if they say he's not God, they don't worship him as God. And we do. We are not worshiping the same God. However, even George W. Bush believed that Jews, Muslims, and Christians all worship the same God. I have it on video. I have him making this statement. That is the popular belief system of the elite. Look, we're all together. We have one God. We're all one people. Let's form a world government. Let's form a world religion. Let the Muslims be Muslims. Let the Jews be Jews. Let the Christians be Christians. But let's just respect one another and say, I'm okay. You're okay. Let's love one another. That's all. That's what they believe. Um, so they have this, this facade of religiosity. I'm not sure they, what, what they do really believe, except that's the nutshell of what is being embraced by the elite right now. Um, Hillary Clinton claims to be a Methodist, I think. But of course, Methodism is now blending into the one world religious system. The Lutherans and the Methodists have signed a statement of unity of faith and purpose with the Roman Catholic Church. There's a huge move on right now to bring all of Christianity back under Roman Catholicism. The Lutherans and the Catholics signed a statement of, of common faith in 1999. They negotiated together on the meaning of justification by faith, which was the central issue that split the church back when the Protestant movement started. Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door of the church at Wittenberg, Germany. And the center of his protest was the just shall live by faith, not by works. So that's been the difference between Protestantism and Catholicism over the last 500 years. Now then, Methodist Lutherans have now signed the same statement that the Catholics now signed. They've negotiated a common statement of what justification by faith means. Many other Protestant movements are now joining together, including some leading evangelicals, such as um, Kenneth Copeland, Joel Osteen. They've all, within the last two years, been to the Vatican. And there's a plan on, in, in 2017, for all of them to go back and to sign this statement of unity of faith and purpose. The reason they picked 2017 is because this is the 500th year anniversary of Martin Luther nailing the theses to the door of the church at Wittenberg. They're now going back to say the protest is over. So there are no Protestants now. So now let's all be one so that the world may know that Jesus 
is Lord. So they believe that that will be the key to converting the world to Christianity. However, when they do that, they're also going to be moving towards the Antichrist and this one world system. It will be the Antichrist and the false prophet. Whoever is Pope at the time of the Antichrist, he will be the false prophet. Now, this present Pope is pretty old to fulfill that role, even though he would make a, he's very persuasive, he's very charismatic, people love him, and so he would make a very good person, but, you know, let's say it would take eight years, we, the final seven years have not begun yet, so let's say it would take eight or nine years for all this to unfold. He's 79 right now, that means he would be 87, 88, when all this would, if it culminated right away, so I don't know whether this present Pope is going to fill that role or not. But whoever is Pope at the time of the Antichrist, he will be the false prophet. 오늘 목사님 말씀을 들으면서 생각이 좀 명료해지는 부분도 있지만 또 혼란스러운 것도 사실 있습니다. 그 지난해 블러드문이나 슈미타 이어에 대해서는 또 목사님께서는 별로 이렇게 관심을 갖지 않는 그런 발언을 하셨고. 오늘은 또그이 저크리스도에 대해서 어 이슬람에서 나온다라는 말과는 또 반대되는 이야기를 하셨습니다. 어 우리는 분명히 마지막 때 살고 있는 것이 사실인데 이럴 때일수록 우리가 어 여러 가지 이야기를 들으면서 어 혼란이 올 수도 있거든요. 마지막 시대 우리가 어떻게 기도하고 어떻게 살아가야 될것 같습니까? Well, like you said, uh, I did not buy into the blood moon teaching because it was not a biblical teaching. And I said, something may happen or may not, but it's not biblical. And many people were teaching when the four blood moons happened that the rapture would occur. I said, that's absolutely not going to happen. It was contrary to the Bible. So uh, I stated at that time, and of course we've seen that proved out to be correct. You don't hear anybody teaching about the blood moons. They came and they went and nothing happened and it's over. Um, so the same thing is going to be true with the teaching that Islam is going to rule the world. This war is going to come. We may be in it right now. ISIS has captured 40% uh, of the Euphrates River in the last two years. They control up and down the Euphrates right now. A secret agreement was made between Russia and the United States uh, in December of 2015. And the agreement was that Russia would fight against ISIS on the west bank of the Euphrates and that the United States would move in to the territory of Iraq on the east of the Euphrates. So what we have at this moment, you have the world's two leading nuclear powers. One of them is fighting ISIS on this side of the Euphrates. The other one is fighting ISIS on this side of the Euphrates. The Bible says a war is coming out of that area it's going to ultimately explode into World War III and kill one-third of mankind. We probably, I'm not certain, we're probably in that war right now. If we're not, another scenario will have to come along to make it happen. But it looks like we're probably already in the infancy of the war that will end up becoming World War III. 목사님께서 제작하신 마지막 때 이해하기 DVD 또 어, 성경 예언에 따른 이스라엘의 미래 여러 가지 이 DVD들이 저희가 이제 제작을 해서 번역해 가지고 한국에서 크리스천들에게 어, 보급을 했는데 그것을 본 분들이 어, 어빙백스터 목사님을 언제 한국에서 만나서 직접 티칭을 들을 수 있겠느냐 이렇게 요구하는 분들이 많이 있어요. 목사님 어떻습니까? 한국에 오실 계획이 있으신지요? Well, um, Brad, you invited me yesterday <laughs> to come to Korea to do a conference, and I've been thinking about it and praying about it and very seriously considering it. So um, we haven't made a permanent uh, final decision yet, but we're seriously considering doing it. Thank you very much. Thank you.